In this video, I'm going to be talking about the properties of radicals that I think most of you did not learn in Algebra 1. And as I'm doing this, what I'm doing is typing some things into those yellow calculators in my room. And so I, if you have a calculator at home, it probably will not do this. Um, but if you've used my yellow calculators in class, you'll, you'll you remember that they kind of give you answers in radical form. So that's what I'm doing in order to get some of these things. Okay, so when it says type into CAS, it's really just talking about a calculator that gives it in um, exact form. Okay, so if I were to type in the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3, all right, um, it's basically all it's going to do it, on mine, it switches them around, that's all it does, but it, it keeps it exactly the same, so it doesn't really simplify it at all. And the question is, is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 equal to square root of 5? This you can actually do on your own calculator. If you do the square root of 2 and you get a decimal, it's about 1.414. And then if you do the square root of 3 and you get a decimal, that's about 1.732. So if we were to add those together... you get roughly 3.146. All right, now the square root of 5 as a decimal is roughly 2.23. So you can see that when I add those individual decimals, I do not get the same as the square root of 5. Okay, and that's my ex explanation for that. Okay, so what's important that I need you to understand is when you have square roots, you cannot just add them together. You can't add the numbers underneath them. Okay? Um, same thing here. If I were to do the square root of 4 plus the square root of 9, all right, well, here I know the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. So I can add 2 plus 3 is 5. And you can see here that the square root of 4 plus the square root of 9 is not the square root of 13 because the square root of 13 is not 5. The square root of 13 as a decimal is 3.6055. All right, so this adding of radicals just does not happen. Now, something I will say is if I were to type in something like this, 3a, 2 square root of 3 plus 5 square root of 3. If I type that in, it's going to give me 7 square root of 3. So what did they do? They didn't add the numbers underneath the square root, right? I didn't get like square root of 6. But they did add the numbers in front of the square root, right? 2 plus 5 is 7. So I like to think of this as kind of like combining like terms, okay? If I had 2x plus 5x, you know that those would combine to be 7x. Well, that's kind of the same thing here, except instead of x, I have the square root of 3. So my answer is 7 square roots of 3. Okay, so following that logic, over here, 2 square root of 7 plus 4 square root of 7, I'm still going to have square root of 7, but I'm going to add the 2 and the 4 to equal 6. Okay, so 6 square roots of 7. So pause the video right now. Um, and then when you come back, I'll have the answers. Okay, so this one is 4 root 5. This one is 2 root 6. And this one cannot be combined because these are they're essentially not like terms. They're not the same radical number underneath the radical. So this would stay square root of 3 plus square root of 5. So that's adding uh, radicals together. Um, let's go ahead and write a general form. So when adding square roots, you must have the same number underneath the square root. in order to add the numbers in front. 
of the radical. Okay. So, does the same thing work for subtraction? All right, so when I put this in to my calculator, it gives me this. So is this going to be the square root of 2? Well, let's do the decimal version. Square root of 5 as a decimal. Uh, hold on, my calculator is acting up. All right, it's 2.23. Oh, that's right, we had it before. And then the square root of 3, we said was 1.73. So if I subtract those, it gives me 0 0.5. And we know that the square root of 2 is not 0 0.5. So that's not working. Okay, and it probably makes more sense to do perfect squares. So square root of 9 is 3. Uh, square root of 4 is 2. If I subtract them, I get 1. And I know that the square root of 5 is not 1. Okay? So then let's look at when can we subtract them. All right, same thing as before. If I have the same number underneath the square root, then I can subtract the numbers in front of the square root. So this would be 7 minus 2 is 5 square root of 6. All right, this would be 8 minus 2 is 6 square roots of 3. This is going to be 3 square root of 5. Okay, here you're subtracting 2 minus 5, so make sure you put your negative in front, negative 3 square root of 7. And then this would be an example where you cannot subtract them. This would stay exactly the same. So our rule for subtraction is the same as addition, except you're subtracting. All right, so that's addition and subtraction of radicals. Let's look at multiplying them. Okay, so now I'm going to type this into my calculator. And it's going to give me a radical answer. So when I type in square root of 2 times the square root of 3, it gives me square root of 6. When I type in square root of 3 times square root of 5, it gives me square root of 15. And when I type in square root of 5 times square root of 6, it gives me square root of 30. So what's going on here? Is the square root of 7 going to, times the square root of 3, is that going to be equal to the square root of 21? The answer is yes. So when we are multiplying square roots or radicals, you just multiply the numbers under the square root. And this you might have seen, especially if you were doing simplifying radicals in Algebra 1. Okay. Now, does it work for dividing? Well, if I type this into my calculator, this is going to give me the square root of 3. This is going to give me the square root of 7. This gives me the square root of 5. So what do you think? Yeah, so the square root of 21 divided by the square root of 7 is going to give me the square root of 3. So when dividing square roots, you just divide the numbers underneath. Okay, simple enough. Now let's talk about, very similar to multiplication, is squaring. Remember that if I square something, then that's just the same as multiplying it times itself. So when I do square root of 7 squared, that's like doing square root of 7 times the square root of 7. All right, so I'm, according to our multiplication rule, then I would multiply that to equal square root of 49, and then the square root of 49 is just 7. So you probably have done this when you were solving quadratics last year. The square and the square root are inverse operations of one another. They, we would say they cancel, right? And all we're left with is 7. Okay, so the square root of 18 squared is simply 18. So you don't have to do all of this. You now know that it would just cancel each other out. So don't do all that go quicker. Same thing here. If I have the square underneath the square root, the same rule applies. Because if I have the square root of 15 times 15, then I have the square root of 225, which is 15. So you see how it doesn't matter um, where the square is, whether it's underneath the square root or outside of the square root. Okay. So here's a perfect example of why you don't want to 
actually do the math, all right, you just follow that pattern that we have just found. Okay? So whenever you see a square in a square root, you know that it's just the number underneath. Okay. Go ahead and pause the video and do this. So hopefully that was quick and easy and you got these answers correct. If not, please make sure to ask about it in class. Okay, so we've done adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, and we've done squaring. So now what I want to talk about is a little bit more complex multiplying. Here in uh, 13 through 16, you notice that I don't just have square roots. I have numbers in front of square roots. So what's going to happen here? Well, let me show you what happens when I type this into my calculator. It's, it gives me 20 square root of 6. In number 14, it gives me negative 30 square root of 21. All right, down here in number 15, if I type that in, it's going to give me positive 6 root 30. So what's happening? So a, a rule we could say is that the numbers outside get multiplied and the numbers inside the radical get multiplied, but we keep them separate. Okay, so when multiplying, square roots multiply the numbers outside the radical together. And then the numbers inside the radical together. Okay, keep them separate. Don't just mush them all together. So you notice here in number 16, that would be 9 times the square root of 25. But notice that, do you see how those are the same thing? So square root of 25, that can be simplified even more. That would be like 9 times 5. So it's like I'm squaring this, and I'm squaring this separately. Do you see that? So if I square 3, that gives me 9. If I square the square root of 5, that's like what we were just doing, that gives me just plain old 5. So you can go straight from here to here and then write your final answer. So that's just a number 45. Okay. So take a moment, pause, do 17 through 20 right now, and see if you get the same answers. Okay, so here are the answers you should have gotten. Hopefully um, we were doing those correctly. And again, like I said, if not, then make sure to ask about it in class. So our last ones that we're doing here in this video is the square roots squared. And we already said that if a square root is squared, then it cancels. But then what about this number here? Don't forget to neglect that. So both of these are going to be squared, just like what we were talking about before. So if I squared 2, that would be 4. If I square the square root of 3, that would be 3. So what I'm really doing is doing 4 times 3, which is 12. All right, so here I'm squaring the 5. That gives me 25. I'm squaring the square root. That's just 2. So that gives me a final answer of 50. So again, squaring the 3 is 9. Squaring the square root is 6. So that gives me 54. And I have 16 times 5, and that's going to give me 80. So pause the video, do these on your own, make sure you're going to get these correct. Okay, so here are the answers you should have gotten. Let me know if you are having trouble with any of these new properties of radicals. I'm going to do a separate video for the simplifying square roots.